Unlike reading and writing, the IELTS listening test is exactly the same whether you're doing the academic test or the general training test. In this video, we're going to practice the listening test together. We'll start by looking at an overview of the listening test. I'll talk you through the different sections of the test first so that you're familiar with the format. Next, we'll practice all parts of the listening test whilst also learning a few tips on how to approach answering the questions. There are 40 questions in the listening test. Looking at this table, you can see how many you need to get right to achieve each of the IELTS bands. The test is designed to be challenging, but don't worry because you don't need to get all the questions right to achieve a good band score. Even if you miss 10 of the questions, you can still get a band 7. Okay, let's look at an overview of the test. There are four sections. In section one, you will hear two people having a conversation. Section two will usually be a single person giving instructions. Section three is also a conversation, but with more people and also in an academic context. Finally, in section four, you will hear one person giving an academic lecture. The test takes about 30 minutes in total. This includes time to read the questions before you listen to each section and time to check your answers. The audio recordings and the questions get more difficult as you progress through the test. If you do the computer-delivered IELTS test, you fill in the answers as you go, and there is an extra two minutes at the end to check your answers and make any final choices. For the paper-based test, you can write on the question pages during the test, and then you get an additional 10 minutes to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. This is what the answer sheet looks like. Be careful. Make sure that you write the answer next to the correct question number. Okay, let's start our practice with section one of the test. This part involves completing a form. You'll typically hear two speakers having a conversation. Some of the information is provided and you need to fill in the gaps with the information that you hear. A really helpful strategy is to try and predict the kind of information, even the answers that you're looking for. If you predict and check, you'll listen more carefully than if you just wait for the right answer. And reading the questions will give you the context and also offer quite a few clues about what the answer is going to be. We'll go through this prediction process together. First, make sure that you understand the instructions. These vary between sections of the test. Here, you're asked to write no more than two words and or a number. You're given time to read the questions. This is really valuable time. As you read, think about what kind of word the answer is likely to be. For example, a family name for question one and the name of a sport or other activity. So I might guess baseball for question four. Beware of distractors, words that are in the recording that might mislead you. For example, the speaker might say, I'm not interested in the gym, or I used to go to the gym, but I hated it. Words like not or used to could mean that this is not the answer you're listening for you need to listen very carefully. Notice how the instructions have changed for questions six to 10. Here, you can write only a maximum of two words, and there's no number. Think about what kind of word the answer will be. This will help you to be ready for the answer and to focus on the right information. The answer to six, will be a type of exercise, something like jogging or cycling. Question seven will probably be two words, an adjective describing a body part, maybe broken finger or torn meniscus. Because the answers to question eight and nine are preceded by a, we know the answer will be a noun or noun phrase. Remember, the answer can only be two words. So question 10, how did you hear about the club, won't be something complex like from a good friend at work. 
It'll be something short and simple, like a friend. So, we've read the questions carefully, and we've thought about the type of information that we're listening for. We're ready. Let's now listen to the audio and begin to answer the questions one to five. Try and answer them while the audio is playing. Feel free to take extra time if you need to. Let's listen. Hi, can I help you? Hello. Yes. Um, is your club taking on new members at the moment? Uh, yes, we're always interested in taking on new members. Uh, just give me a moment and I'll get an application form. Right, here we are. So let's start with your name. It's Harry. Okay, and your surname? It's Simons. Is that like Simon with an S? No, um, it's S-Y-M-O-N-D-S. Most people find it rather difficult to spell. I see, it has a silent D. I guess a lot of people miss that. Now, let me see. Can you tell me when you were born? Yes, certainly. The 10th of December. Thanks. And the year? 1969. Okay, good. Now, are you thinking of becoming a full-time member? Uh, probably not. W what kind of memberships do you have? Well, we also have off-peak membership, which is between 9 and 12 in the morning and 2 and 5 in the afternoon. And then we do have a weekend membership. So a weekend membership is just Saturday and Sunday? Yes, that's right. OK, well, that's not going to work for me. It looks like I'll have to be full-time. I'm afraid off-peak memberships won't do, as I'm not free at those times, and I just don't want to be restricted to weekends. OK, I'll make a note of that. Right. Uh, we have several facilities at the club, including a gym, a swimming pool, tennis and squash courts. Uh, what activities are you planning on doing? Well, do you have badminton? Yes, uh, we do. And table tennis? I'm afraid not. Well, not at the moment anyway. OK. Well, I'm also very keen on swimming, so I'm glad you have a pool. I'll certainly be doing a lot of that. OK, I've got that. Um, will you be using the gym? No, I'm not interested in that. OK, so just let me work out what the cost will be. Yes, uh, that comes to 1200 for the year. You can choose to pay annually for the full year or monthly. It's up to you. Oh, I prefer to pay regularly in small amounts rather than have a large amount to pay in one go, if that's OK. Sure, that's fine. Right, I've got the most important details for now. Now, let's try to answer questions 6 to 10. Listen closely. So, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about your lifestyle, if that's okay with you. Yes, that's fine. Um, do you do any regular exercise at the moment? Yes, I do a bit. Good. And what do you do? Well, every few days I go jogging. Yes, that's good. How long do you go for? Well, it varies. I guess it depends on how energetic I'm feeling. Yes, of course. Every little bit helps. Um, do you have any injuries at the moment? Well, I did break a bone in my foot playing football a long time ago, but that's all healed up now. But in the last few days, I realised I have a bad ankle. I think I must have injured it last week and it's a bit sore now. But apart from that, I'm fine. Right. I guess you might need to rest it for a few days to let it recover. Yes, I will. So let me just ask you what you want to achieve by joining the club. Do you have any targets or goals? Well, I suppose my main aim is to build up my fitness level. Is that the kind of thing you mean? Yes, that's fine. All the activities you're going to be doing should certainly help you with that. OK. And could you tell me what you do for a living? Well, I was in finance until recently. OK, so what are you doing at the moment? Well, I'm a charity worker. Oh, that's fine. I'll write that down. OK, nearly done. One last question. Can I ask you how you heard about the club? Did you see it advertised or did you go to our website, for example? Well, I've been looking for a health club for a while and I asked my friends for suggestions, but they weren't much help. And then I was listening to the radio and your club was mentioned, so I thought I'll go along and see what it's like. Great. Well, we look forward to having you as a member. How did you go? Let's have a look at the correct answers. Here they are. The words in brackets are optional. For question 10, you can write radio, on radio, or the radio. But you can't write on the radio. Why not? 
because it's more than two words. So that's section one. It's pretty straightforward. You read the questions carefully so you know what to listen for. You hear the answers and you write them down. If you got any questions wrong, it's a good idea. Yes, it's a great idea to go back and listen again and listen carefully for the correct answer. Try to find where you went wrong and think about how you can improve next time. Before we move on to part two, I want to tell you about E2's online IELTS preparation platform. It's a website built specifically for IELTS students. It has everything an IELTS student could ever need, and I can't recommend it enough. And signing up is super easy. Just go to e2testprep.com and click the Start Free Trial button. Let's move on to section two. We'll start with multiple choice. You'll need to quickly read the questions, listen carefully, and choose the correct answer. Now, be careful. For each question, you'll likely hear something that sounds like the correct answer, but is actually a distractor. To avoid being misled by distractors, pay attention to things like whether or not the speaker uses a negative word, such as isn't or can't. Or for instance, for question 13, you might hear something like, the event will begin at 7.45, but the guests will start arriving 30 minutes before that. So you really have to be careful that you're not just listening for the words in the answer. You need to listen carefully to understand how everything is connected. If you think you hear the answer, keep listening carefully. Sometimes when students think they hear the answer, they briefly stop paying attention and then they miss the correct answer. On test day, this could cost you a few points. Let's move on to matching questions. Here, you need to match the people to the work. The information will come in the order of the question numbers. In this case, 15, 16, and 17. The names A, B, C, D, and E are not in order, and you can only pick three of them. And finally, here are the sentence completion questions. Start by reading the instructions. You can write no more than three words for each answer. Next, read the sentences and try to guess what the answer might be. For example, for question 18, you might guess that the manager will make an announcement. Don't worry about word count when guessing. Just focus on the type of answer that would make sense. And finally, listen carefully. Let's now listen to the audio and begin to answer the questions 11 to 14. Try to answer them while the audio is playing. Once again, feel free to take extra time if you need to. Let's listen. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all feeling okay after the activities of the last week or so. I know you've all been working very hard recently and we've been exceptionally busy, especially with the wedding last weekend and the trade fair straight after that. And now we have only three days to prepare for the birthday party this weekend. The events recently have gone extremely well and the hotel is beginning to get a very good reputation so we need to keep it up. At the moment we don't have exact numbers of guests and though we usually only cater for groups of less than 50, we will have quite a few more than that. So, as I said, not sure of numbers but of course we won't go over the maximum of 100. But it's likely that we'll need all of you to work this weekend, so if any of you can't, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, right, uh, so what time will the event start? Well, the invitation says guests should arrive between 7.30 and 7.45, but our experience is that there are always a few who like to arrive early, so we'll expect the first people at 7.15. As the numbers are quite large, this will certainly be the case. Food will be served at around 8.30 and then, depending on how long the meal takes, the entertainment will start about two hours later. Now for this, we were expecting a live band for the occasion, which is always fun, but apparently this has been cancelled due to illness. So the hosts know someone who is a comedian who will be replacing the band. We had hoped that the resident magician who worked here through the summer would be able to help out, but they weren't keen on that idea. 
Now let's try to answer questions 15 to 17. Listen closely. So I'd just like to go through who's doing what when the guests arrive, and I think we'll make a few changes from the last party held here. If I remember correctly, it was Olav who coordinated the task of providing the guests with drinks, or was it Ahmed? Um, I'm not sure, but Gary asked to do it this time, so that will be his job. There's been no decision yet on what the drinks are going to be, but I hope they decide soon in case we need to order something special. Now, for receiving the guests' coats and hats, it's important we have someone experienced doing this as we don't want guests losing their belongings. And Monica, last time this was your responsibility. Susan, I know you wanted to do this, but as the numbers are quite high for this event, I won't make a change here. Right, now, last time there was some confusion as to where guests were supposed to go once they had deposited their things and we had guests roaming around the whole hotel. So Armand and Olav, I believe you discussed the problems with Susan and thought she would be good at guiding guests after they had arrived, and I'm fine with that. Now let's try to answer questions 18 to 20. Let's listen. Right, and now for some general instructions. Once the guests have arrived, they will be in and around the lounge area, and then at around 8.30, we need to get them to move to the restaurant for their meal. This often proves difficult and can take a long time, so I will ring a bell so that everyone knows it's time to eat. Hopefully, this will speed things up a bit. Also, for this event, there will be a seating plan, so the guests won't be able to decide for themselves where to sit. They'll have to sit according to the plan. There'll be a plan on each table, and I've been thinking where to put the master plan so everyone can view it before they enter the restaurant. So they'll be spending quite a while in the lounge. I've decided to also put a plan there. Now, this should speed up the start of their meal. Once the meal starts, you'll be very busy waiting on the tables, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you uh, to be good-humoured and polite to all the guests. The organiser of the event will be saying a few words, and so will two of his colleagues. So when the speeches start, all activity must stop in the restaurant so that the three people giving them can be heard. This shouldn't take long, and it should be towards the end of the meal. After that, the guests will move back to the lounge for the entertainment. Uh, so I think that's it. Any questions, come and see me later. How did you go? Let's have a look at the answers. Here they are. Did you notice that for question 11, the speaker mentioned all three options, and the correct answer was the final one that he said. So if you heard the word wedding and thought it was the answer, you missed the point that it was from last month and that the next event was a party. Again, if you think you heard the answer, keep listening. With 15, the speaker mentioned that Olaf and Ahmed were options but Gary would be the one to do it this time. Don't worry if you got any of these wrong. Just note why it happened. And next time, be extra careful. That way, you'll improve. Finally, you might have noticed that for question 19, the manager said that a lot of people spend time in the lounge, so he intended to put a plan there. He referenced the location after talking about the lounge. Again, strong English users will pick up on this, but if they're not paying close enough attention, they may miss it, so be careful. Let's move on to section three. Section three is more challenging than sections one and two. The speakers are likely to disagree or change their minds. Be prepared for lots of distractors. This section tests your ability to listen for detail and filter out irrelevant information, sometimes over longer periods of time. We're going to listen to two people, Jane and Brian, talking about drawings of children's stories. Check the instructions. For each answer, write one word only. Read the questions quickly. In the paper-based test, you can underline keywords, the computer-delivered test allows you to highlight. The process of doing this locks the ideas into your mind, and looking at the highlighted or underlined words focuses your attention. Again, we should try to predict the answers. We can use the context to guess. 
Of course, our guess will probably be different from the actual answer, but the process of trying to predict the answer is useful because it helps us identify the type of information that we are listening for. For question 21, I'm going to guess house. 22 is going to be a type of person, like a farmer, or maybe an animal, like a cow. There is a grammatical clue for question 23. The answer is almost certainly going to be an ing form of a verb, such as walking or camping. Similarly, 24 is most probably an ing word, like smiling or singing. The answer for question 25 is probably a place, like river. Question 26 says that the change to be made to the drawing is to add a something for each person. That's got to be a noun, like a hat or a backpack. Okay, for the next four questions, we just write a letter, A, B, C, or D, to represent who is going to write the different parts of the report. We should keep looking at the options while we listen. A is Jane, B is Brian, that's easy. C is for both, and D is for neither. The answers always come in the same order as the questions. The keywords that we are listening out for are planned, ideas, interpretation, and illustrations. Who is going to write about each of these things? Ready? Let's now listen to the audio and begin to answer the questions 21 to 26. Try and answer them while the audio is playing. As always, feel free to take extra time if you need to. Let's listen. Hello, Jane. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Brian. No problem. Well, we'd better work out where we are on our project, I suppose. Yeah, I've looked at the drawings you've done for my story, The Forest, and I think they're brilliant. They really create the atmosphere I had in mind when I was writing it. I'm glad you like them. There are just a few suggestions I'd like to make. Go ahead. Now, I'm not sure about the drawing of the cave. It's got trees all around it, which is great, but the drawing's a bit too static, isn't it? I think it needs some action. Yes, there's nothing happening. Perhaps I should add the boy. Terry, isn't it? He would be walking up to it. Yes, let's have Terry in the drawing. And what about putting in a tiger, the one that he makes friends with a bit later? Maybe it could be sitting under a tree washing itself. And the tiger stops in the middle of what it's doing when it sees Terry walking past. That's a good idea. OK, I'll have a go at that. Then there's the drawing of the crowd of men and women dancing. They're just outside the forest, and there's a lot going on. That's right. You wanted them to be watching a carnival procession, but I thought it would be too crowded. Do you think it works like this? Yes, I like what you've done. The only thing is, could you add Terry to it without changing what's already there? What about having him sitting on the tree trunk on the right of the picture? Yes, that would be fine. And do you want him watching the other people? No, he's been left out of all the fun, so I'd like him to be crying. That'll contrast nicely with the next picture, where he's laughing at the clowns in the carnival. Right, I'll do that. And then the drawing of the people ice skating in the forest. I wasn't too happy with that one, because they're supposed to be skating on grass, aren't they? That's right, and it's frozen over. At the moment, it doesn't look quite right. Mm, I see what you mean. I'll have another go at that. And I like the wool hats they're wearing. Maybe you could give... Each of them a scarf as well? Yes, that's easy enough. They can be streaming out behind the people to suggest they're skating really fast. Mm, great. Uh, well, that's all on the drawings. Right, so you've finished writing your story and I just need to finish illustrating it and my story and your drawings are done. And now let's try to answer questions 27 to 30. Listen carefully. So the next thing is to decide what exactly we need to write about in the report that goes with the stories and how we're going to divide the work. Right, Jane. What do you think about including a section on how we plan the project as a whole, Brian? That's probably quite important. Yeah, well, you've had most of the good ideas so far. How do you feel about drafting something? Then we can go through it together and discuss it. OK, that seems reasonable. And I could include something on how we came up with the ideas for our two stories, couldn't I? Well, I've started writing something about that, so why don't you do the same and we can include the two things? Right. So what about our interpretation of the stories? Do we need to write about what we think they show, like the value of helping other people, all that sort of thing? That's going to come up later, isn't it? 
I think everyone in the class is going to read each other's stories and come up with their own interpretations, which we're going to discuss. I missed that. So it isn't going to be part of the report at all? No, but we need to write about the illustrations because they're an essential element of children's experience of reading the stories. It's probably easiest for you to write that section, as you know more about drawing than I do. Maybe, but I find it quite hard to write about. I'd be happier if you did it. OK, so when do you think... All right, how did you get on? It's a little bit more challenging than section one. We needed to multitask by really focusing on the questions and listening at the same time. Let's check the answers for questions 21 to 26. Here they are. Cave, tiger, dancing, crying, grass, and scarf. Let's look at the transcript for the matching questions. Question 27 asks who is going to write about how Jane and Brian planned the project. Jane asks about including a section on how they planned the project, and Brian suggests that Jane draft. Jane agrees. So the answer is A, Jane is going to write a draft. Question 28 asks who is going to write about how they had their ideas for the stories? Jane says that she could include something on how they came up with the ideas. Brian says he's already started writing something about this and suggests that they include the two things. They're both going to write about how they had the ideas for the stories. So the answer is C, both Jane and Brian. Question 29 is about the interpretation of the stories. Jane asks about it. Brian says it will come up later, and Jane asks, so it isn't going to be part of the report. Brian agrees, so the answer is D. Neither of them is going to write about the interpretation of the stories. Finally, question 30. Who is going to write comments on the illustrations? At first, Brian suggests that Jane should write that section because she knows more about drawing than he does. However, this is a distractor. Jane says she finds it hard to write about drawing and says that she'd be happier if Brian writes that part, so the answer is Brian. B for Brian. Here are the answers on the answer sheet, A, C, D, and B. So that was an example of section three. It can be quite intensive going through in such detail, but you're doing really well. Analyzing the way that the answers are presented in the audio recordings helps you to know what to expect in your next practice and in the real IELTS test. Remember, if you're having trouble with any of these questions, you can learn E2 strategies at e2testprep.com. Click the link in the description below to get started. We're on to the final part, section four. In this section, you need to fill in the gaps to complete notes about a lecture. First of all, look at the instructions. Two words and or a number. So you can answer with two words and a number. One word and a number, or a number, or two words, or one word. Those are all possibilities. Have a look at questions 31 to 36, read the incomplete sentences, and predict. For 31, animals that were previously domesticated but have become, I'm going to say, feral or abandoned. For 32, I'm thinking loss of habitat or homes. For 33, I might predict lower quality in soil. Again, I'm not worried about guessing correctly. I'm just trying to activate my brain a bit. Keep in mind to improve this skill. The more you read English on a daily basis, the better your instinct will be for this. In section four, there is no break. You listen to the audio recording all the way through and answer all 10 questions. Ready? Let's now listen to the audio and begin to answer the questions 31 to 36. Let's listen. Okay, so in our last few sessions, we've been looking at how invasive species, particularly 
non-native plants can have a detrimental impact on Australia's environment. And today, I'd like to shift the focus just a little bit and take a closer look at feral animals. So let's start with the definition. A feral animal is essentially one that was once a domestic breed, but has escaped, as it were, and returned to its wild state. Some of the most common examples are horses, pigs, and though they might not immediately spring to mind, camels as well. Now, though these animals may seem harmless, when they multiply in large numbers and spread across wilderness areas, the results can be catastrophic. One of the major impacts can be seen on the land itself. Great numbers of feral animals, like horses and deer, graze and trample the earth. In doing so, they remove vegetation and root systems. All those hundreds of feet, or hooves rather, compact the ground, which in turn can reduce water infiltration as well as the nutrient levels in the soil. Overgrazing by large groups of herbivores can result in erosion, which in some cases can be almost impossible to repair. As well as this impact on the land, there is of course the huge threat that feral species pose to native ones. Not only do feral species prey on the native wildlife, but they also compete with them for food and shelter, often taking over burrows and dens of other animals. Ferals can also destroy the habitat of native species by, for instance, eating leaves of a certain tree where local birds like to nest, or removing the plants and bushes that provide hiding spots for the ground dwellers, thereby exposing them to a greater risk of predation. Another issue is the proliferation of infectious diseases that can occur between species. This is of particular concern to farmers whose livestock are at risk of infection and reinfection, despite their best efforts to control such outbreaks. This brings us to possibly the greatest threat to Australia's environment, the feral cat. Having already caused the extinction of many native birds and small to medium-sized mammals, the feral cat still threatens over 100 native species. It is a highly skilled predator, with each individual capable of consuming between five and a staggering 30 animals in a single day. Added to this is their rapid rate of reproduction and the fact that they inhabit 99.8% of Australia's land area. And it's clear to see that humble Moggy is in fact a ticking time bomb for local fauna. Let's do questions 37 to 40 now. So what can be done to control these feral animals? Conventional methods have long been utilized by governments and landowners alike, with mixed success. Perhaps the oldest form of these is the use of fences designed to keep the pests out of the crops or away from the stock. While these can manage to keep feral invaders out, providing they're maintained and structurally sound, this option is really only successful when it comes to excluding pests from small areas, and their effectiveness tends to diminish as the space increases. Cost-wise, this can also be a prohibitively expensive option in some cases. Trapping is another method and has proven useful to some extent, but this too has its limitations, since some animals are a bit reluctant to go into the trap, even with tasty morsels, to encourage them in. This leaves more drastic options like baiting, which basically involves using a particular poison designed to be eaten by the feral animals. Obviously, this too can be problematic, since non-target animals may consume them. Surprisingly, and perhaps somewhat counterintuitively, using helicopters to shoot from is considered to be among the most humane methods of control. This method, of course, is only suitable for certain large species in the outback. Clearly, the problems we're grappling with here, and indeed around the world, are complex and contentious. There is, of course, opposition from activists and the general public, to some degree, to when it comes to matters such as this. They raise legitimate questions about cruelty and the hypocrisy of culling some animals to protect others. So, on the one hand, there's the urgent need to protect endangered and vulnerable native species. And on the other, there's the perspective of invading species. Let's look at the answers. 
wild vegetation, nutrient levels, shelter diseases, reproduction, fences, maintained, reluctant, and helicopters. There are some long words there. Remember, you don't need to get all of them. Section 4 is the hardest part of the test, and even one or two correct answers in this section can make a difference to your overall band score. Well, we're done. The listening test takes a lot of concentration and you need to keep very focused on the task at hand. It's the first test that you'll do on IELTS test day, which is good because your mind will be at its freshest. Don't beat yourself up if you missed some of the answers or if you found it very challenging. However, as you know, the real key to facing these challenges and maximizing your potential is more practice.